Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to Bed 1870s Homestead. My name's Rachel. And the other day I stumbled across a new canning recipe that just blew my mind. Like I'm thinking, how in the world is this safe canning when I can't can other similar items? I questioned it for like two seconds before I jumped up and made it <laughs> because I love all things lemon and we made some lemon curd the other day. It is an approved canning recipe from the National Center of Food Preservation and I need so much more in my life. <laughs> it is so good. If you don't know what lemon curd is, I will introduce you to all the things lemon curd today in today's video and we're going to get to making it. It is a crazy simple recipe um, that I don't want the techniques to overwhelm you on how to make it. So I'll show you how to make it. We're going to can some more up. This will be round two because I've already sold out. This is my last jar of the first round and we're going to make some more because I need some on my pantry shelves and my customers are going to want more out at the farm stand. So let's get over to the stove. Um, actually, let's talk about the ingredients. That way, if you want to write them down, you can do that now. Okay, well, clearly it's lemon curd, right? So you need like lots of lemons. You need a cup of lemon juice. Now, this is the only part that I strayed from the approved recipe is they say to use bottled lemon juice. I'm sure that's for a reason for like you a known acidity level, um, but I truly and firmly believe that real lemons are what makes a good lemon curd. So we squeezed a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. That was four lemons for me. Um, so about a medium to large this size, lemon. And then you need two cups of just your white granulated sugar. Um, the recipe calls for, as optional, a half a cup of lemon zest. There's an alternative to that. We're going in with about three good tablespoons of lemon extract. Um, so, because I just don't feel like zesting a half a cup of lemons. And personally for me, I don't know that I want lemon zest in it. I want it smooth, creamy. Now here's where the big money maker comes into play. Lemons are pricey too. This is a, a bit of a pricey recipe, unless you're down south and you get to grow lemons. Eggs. So there are four whole eggs and seven egg yolks. Crazy, huh? And then three quarter cups of chilled butter. And a splash of vanilla. So that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't think there's any salt. I'll double check when we get to that step. But we need to head over to the stove because we gotta do the first part in a double boiler method. So come on over here with me and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm sure like many of you, I don't own a double boiler, so I make it up. So let me show you my system. One second. I just have a pot with about an inch and a half of water or so, because you don't want the water touching the bottom of your bowl. And then I'm gonna set my bowl in there that is, um, can sit in there nicely. We're gonna whisk these eggs real quick. And we're going to pour in our sugar. I'm going to get all of that. And again, that was four whole eggs, seven egg yolks, and two cups of sugar. And this makes about five pint, um, half pints. Whisk this together. So that sugar's all incorporated good into those egg yolks. Okay, and we're gonna pour in our lemon juice. Now, you certainly do not have to use 
freshly squeezed lemon juice. You could follow the recipe as is and use the bottled lemon juice. But that smell, you just don't get that smell. All right, now we're gonna cut on our heat on this eye and I'm gonna go about a little over medium. I wanna do this slowly over the double boiler. Now let me talk to you guys for a second while I'm doing this and I'll do it quietly. Um, you And you only have to stir, like whisk this gently. You, you just don't want it to cook on the sides of the bowl. You just need to keep it moving, just ever so gentle. And it's gonna go through a couple phases. The recipe um, says to use a thermometer and watch for it to turn 170 degrees and then that's when you pull it off. And that's also when it starts to thicken. But you can visually see the change um, of the consistency of the texture. So the foam will kind of die down. It'll get nice and thick on you. And every now and then I'm just going around the sides and then it gets kind of like shiny on the top. At least it did for me. So I hope to be able to show that to you again. But listen, have you ever had lemon bars? Like the really, really good lemon bars, the Cristes brand mix. I've never made them homemade myself, but my mother-in-law makes them all the time. And it's such a fond memory of her lemon bars. And it tastes exactly like, to me anyway, like you're eating a spoonful of the creamy center of a lemon bar. Um, and I've, we used a jar um, this week right away. <laughs> and let me tell you, lemon curd's not necessarily something you certainly could just eat it. But it's usually like worked into things. So um, this week we made like a lemon curd, Greek yogurt, blueberry trifle, just in like little cups. I happened to have family stop by unexpected. So I just threw together a bunch of little trifle cups and it had like some cookie crumb in the bottom with some Greek yogurt, blueberries, a dollop of lemon curd, some more cookie crumb, blueberries, and Greek yogurt. And everyone loved it, it's so good. <laughs> um, my mo mother-in-law said it tasted like those old trifle cups you would get from Kentucky Fried Chicken back in the day. And um, I made, um, a lot of times you'll see them in lemon curd and pastries. So if you've ever seen like the Danishes that have the lemon dollop of gooey goodness on top, that's lemon curd. Um, I made a blueberry bread with lemon curd like swirled in. So half the blueberry bread batter went into the blueberry, the loaf pan. And then I did like two big dollops of um, lemon curd inside, swirled that around and then filled the loaf pan with the rest of the um, batter. And it's, it's just divine. If you like lemon, you, there's no way you won't love this. And um, it, because it is uh, pricey ingredients, I mean, you're almost using a dozen eggs you're using almost a pound of butter. Um, it's, it's a lot. Well, maybe that's a half a pound. Anyway, um, it doesn't go for cheap at my farm stand. I'll let you know that. This is uh, a delicacy and should be treated as such. Of course, if you have any uh, lack of self-control, it might not last that long, but if you can make it last, I mean, the little half pint that we had in our fridge, it might have lasted three days because I found ways to use it. So I need to get some on my pantry shelf and I need to get some more made because it's blueberry season and absolutely nothing goes better, in my opinion, with lemons than, or with blueberries than lemon curd. Can smell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
I can feel it thickening up in there. So I'll bring you guys down here and show you the change when it happens. See, there's a lot of foam right now. I remember that when I first made it, that foam kind of dissipates when it changes too. And I can hear my water really starting to bubble now at this point in time in the double boiler. Oh my goodness, did I just miss that whole section? I thought I recorded that. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, so this is what it looks like. It went really quick once the texture changes. It goes from kind of like a semi-translucent look and feel to very opaque. The foam completely dissipates. It gets real shiny on the top. And I was showing you how you can see it on the whisk. You can, it's like kind of like soap making too. You can trace on the top. So I'm gonna call this good. We're gonna pull it off and do the next step. Okay, so this will not be the only round we're doing. So maybe I can, um, in the next batch, just film that one section and try to get that in there for you guys where I show the change in texture. So now what I'm doing is I have my butter here and I'm just going to cut it into little cubes and put it, plop it in here and we're going to whisk that butter in with our vanilla oops, and our um, lemon extract and then that's it. It's done and we can it in a water bath canner for 15 minutes. Oops. All right, so let's get that butter whisked in. You guys are kinda, it's gonna melt pretty quick because this lemon curd is hot. I wish I still had a jar in the fridge and I can show you how it spoons out. It spoons out very much like a solid. It's not jiggly. It's like um, if you put pudding in, a, in the refrigerator and the pudding was quite thick, it's not gonna spill. It just scoops right out, almost like peanut butter, I guess. All right, let's go in with our lemon extract and about a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, and we're gonna whisk this in. Alrighty, that is, see what I mean about how you can trace on top of the batter? That's what you're looking for when you get to that texture. You could certainly use the thermometer and get to the 170 degrees like they say, but it's easy enough to tell. Alrighty, we're ready to jar this up. I went ahead and got five jars out. Tap this off. Save this, lick it. You'll thank yourself. All right. Now this one, unlike jams and jellies, you're only gonna go to a half an inch of headspace, not the quarter inch of headspace. Quite simple. I have my steam canner, by the way, going behind me, um, heating up, and we'll get our jars in there. Once it comes to my pressure that I need, we will uh, start our timer for 15 minutes. It's just really such a simple, I almost wonder if you guys can see how that's setting up in the jar. Isn't that nice? It's really so similar to the texture of pudding. And then, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I haven't advertised, by the way, our affiliate affiliation with Four Jars, and it is just canning season, so I wanted to mention them. Um, we have a discount code that is in all the descriptions of our videos, and it'll save you some money on those canning lids. And they offer all kinds of things now, vacuum sealers. Um, I think they are even offering jars now. So if you need a deal, you can run over there and load up on those lids before you can't find them at Walmart and other places that you shop. 
And we're gonna have to wash our the rims of our jars because this does have a lot of sugary and buttery goodness. So you don't want anything, especially after, you know, the ingredients that we had to use in this, you don't want anything to go to waste. Well, it looks like this jar is just gonna have to go in my refrigerator. Shucks. I'm so sad about that. I'm not. And also I shared it with my kids and my son uh, hasn't been over here since I shared it and he really needs a jar. He said, I need that. So I need to make some to share with the kids. This one's a little bit too full. Alrighty, let me get a cloth. I always do this with you guys. It's just heaven, absolute heaven on a spoon. All right, let me get a clean cloth. We'll wipe these uh, lids, rims of our jars and we'll put the lids on finger tight. I don't want this to come to pressure, so I'm gonna cock that lid before I'm ready. That one's just gonna go in the fridge. So I don't need to can that one. All right. It's a simple recipe, right? It just uh, sounds odd and might seem a little um, intimidating if you've never used that boiler method, uh, double boiler, sorry, technique. Um, but there's nothing to it. You just put a bowl on a pot of water. Don't let the water touch the bowl. I did cut that down that heat to about medium. Um, I didn't want it to go too fast. You wanna take your time with it. In total, stirring time, five to seven minutes maybe. And then you saw how easy it was. You whisk in your butter, your vanilla, and your lemon, and you're done. So I know easy is relative. So um, to me, it's a simple recipe. And I'd encourage you to try it. Like always, I'll leave you with what those jars look like coming out, but you can already see one. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. And I have enough lemons that I can make one, two, three, four, one, two, three, almost two more batches. So I think I'll save some lemons and maybe we'll do a blueberry lemonade. That'll be fun. And then the other four lemons, I'm gonna do another round here when I'm done and I know a lot of you were interested when we shared this on Facebook and uh, were surprised to see that it was a safe canning recipe and it just makes my head spin a little. So, all right, I'll see you guys on the next video. We're, again, water bath canning, 15 minutes. So check your elevation for where you are, bring your canner, if you're using a water bath canner, just bring it to a boil. But if you're using a steam canner like me, watch your elevation and when it gets there, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna be licking away. Um, start your timer. This is where owning a farm stand is quite dangerous for somebody like me that loves, loves sweets and pastries. So I have to sell everything. So my only taste I get is if I get to like the bowl. <laughs>